We are back talking about the five principles to hustle with heart. And I've been hearing from many of you that you love this idea of yielding your fruit. And I'm so glad that you love that. Um, today, we're talking about principle number two. And we're starting with, uh, this is again in chapter four of my book, and you can go grab that on my website or on Amazon. Um, but we're talking about faith and trust. And very often, I think we get these two things combined and a little overlapping. But today, where I want you to focus is that faith is the belief, and then trust is putting that belief in to action. So remember that our foundational verses for the hustle with heart process and journey are found in John 15, four and five, all about abiding. And here's the deal is that faith and trust is also all about abiding. So I want to restate this amazing quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You're familiar with it, that faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. And we know that faith is the substance of things not seen and that God is always teaching us to lean into our faith, but the action of that is the trust. So I went to look this up, this concept of faith and trust, because there's so much overlap about them. And I found an incredible blog post on guideposts.org. So that's in the show notes, or if you're watching it on YouTube, you'll see it here on the screen. And this is what it says. Faith is a belief system. Trust is an action. Faith is believing that God is who he says he is and that what God can do, only God can do. But trust takes things a step further. It's making the willful choice to trust that God will do what he promises. And to me, this means that faith is believing God is God and we are not. But trust is obeying his instructions, knowing that he will fulfill his promises and trusting that however he fulfills those promises to us is far greater than our plan, completely aligned with his will and his way, right? We know that um, faith is saying, I don't see the whole staircase, Lord, but I don't need to because I know who you are. I know that you've written my story. I know that you're out ahead of me. And that you've always delivered me and you've always provided and you prepare me and you position me. But I know who you are. And so because you have provided the staircase, then I will trust and step. I like to think of it as God saying, you take the action that I direct and watch what I do with your obedience. Mm, it's so beautiful. It's about having faith the size of a mustard seed. You know, you may be at a place in your business where you think this is not where I thought I was going. Many of the women that seek out my coaching have had success, but they're at a place in their business that they're just feeling unfulfilled or empty or sort of like, okay, so what? I've had the success. Or maybe they're just thinking, man, God has got me growing and I need some help with strategy and accountability and focus, right? And it is in those moments that sometimes our faith can seem so small. But if we just have a glimmer of that faith, we just have that mustard seed size faith. God can do anything with that faith. God can do anything with that faith. So let me share with you personally, and I talk about this in the book, uh, the my story of where I hit my wall and I was working constantly. I'd had great success in my network marketing business, but because I am a driver, striver and achievement chaser, and I'd been on stage and I had the car and I had all the things, I was shocked really when A, I woke up feeling like this is it because this doesn't feel like I thought it would. And B, when I was doing and doing and doing more, but my business stalled. And in fact, it began to go backwards. And I was like, what is happening here? Like, Lord, you're taking things away from me. And yet 
I'm working. Now, remember at this time, I did not have a relationship with Jesus. I was praying to God, but I had no personal relationship with Jesus. And I reached out to a friend of mine and was asking her what, uh, what was happening? Like how, how, and why would I be feeling this way? And she referred me to Judges 6 and 7 and the story of Gideon. So if you don't know the story of Gideon, here's Gideon. He's an ordinary guy, right? He's out in the threshing fields. And an angel comes to him and tells him that he is going to lead the Israel, the Israel army, Israel's army, against the Midianites. And oh, by the way, he's going to defeat them. And he's like, what are you talking about? So much so that um, you've heard this term of throwing of fleeces. So, so he's like, okay, Lord, if this is really what you mean, I'm going to put this fleece out here. And he gives him like two different times he does this, right? I'm going to put this fleece out here. And if, if in the morning the ground is dry, but there's dew on the fleece, then I'll know it's you. Oh, but just in case, Lord, the next day, um, and I may have these two backwards. If, if there's dew on the ground, but the fleece is dry, then I'll know it's you. So he kind of puts God through all of these paces and thank goodness that the Lord is so gracious and merciful with us. Right. Um, but what God chose in choosing this simple man, what he begins to do to show his great power is that he shrinks the army from 32,000 to 300. So you can imagine here's Gideon, no military experience, right. But a faith in the Lord and God shrinks his army and yet Gideon's faith is such that he says, okay, Lord, I'm going to step in trust and I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Really encourage you to go read this in Judges 6 and 7. And he wanted to prove to the Israelites that this was not through their power. This was not through their military prowess. This was nothing that they could have done to win this victory. And what I felt in that moment that God was saying to me is that he will often remove from us anything that we could point to as the reason for our success, the reason for our victory, the reason for our growth and our, our client roster growing and our services selling out. Right. But he removes those things so that we will grow that mustard seed of faith. And then we will be willing to put that faith into action by taking the step of trust. And we all know, because we're familiar with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that we are to not lean on our own understanding, that in all our ways we are to acknowledge him and trust him. And trust is an action word. It's an action word, right? We know that James tells us that faith without works is dead. Well, the works is trusting to step forward, right? If we think of Abraham and Sarah in Genesis, in the Old Testament, and how, number one, Abraham is so trusting, like his faith is so strong in the Lord that when the Lord says, I'm going to take you to a land that you do not know, Abraham's like, okay, whatever you want, right? And then throughout that whole story, as he's continuing to say that Sarah is going to give birth, that Sarah is going to give birth. And then Sarah, of course, gives her maidservant Haggai to Abraham so that they can create like have a baby and and then she is irritated with Haggai you can almost sense that Sarah's like yeah okay lord uh-huh you keep telling me i'm going to have a baby do you not know how old i am like come on right but yet god is like no 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 you may laugh but he's saying in not so many words like do you trust me do you trust me here's the thing friends this principle of the hustle with heart journey is all about God breaking down your strongholds. Last week, we talked about coveting and idolatry and in, in how we yield our fruit. But God will break down that stronghold of pride where you may be feeling like, oh, look at everything that I did. But yet at the same time, you're feeling like, oh, but I'm so empty. He will break down your self-reliance and he will show you his way. And what we create outside of his will, we will have to maintain outside of his will. So I don't know about you, but I would much prefer to have the, the faith and step in trust and follow how he defines and directs me and being disciplined, right? In that trust, there's that discipline piece of our four keys. I would much prefer to do that so that he can show up and show off and he can get all the glory than to try to do it my way way. Because see, as an overachiever, I tend to take God's instructions and say, 
Well, let me multiply that. God, you told me to do these two things. Well, but let me multiply that and do six things. And I can imagine if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll, you'll see this. Um, you'll be familiar maybe with this feeling where God's like beating his head on his, his hand on his forehead going, would you just trust me? Like, I got this. Do you not think I already know what's going to happen here? And would you just have the faith and step out? And when we get out ahead of him and we do more and we're being active, not productive, when we are so concerned about checking all the boxes and doing it perfectly and God is saying, I just need you to show up in this one place. I just need you to drop this one pebble into the water to create the ripple, not this handful of rocks, right? It is when we do that and we get out ahead of him that we actually don't see the progress that we think we should. And I believe that that's God saying, no, 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 without me, you can do nothing, right? Here we go back to abiding in the vine. Without the vine and his nourishment, we don't even exist. So if that is the case, then trust in its deepest meaning is saying, God, anything, anything that you want, send me like Isaiah did. Here I am, or Samuel, here I am, send me. It's bold and sometimes scary, even when we know he has our best interest in mind. But friend, when we show up and take the step of action and we take that step in trusting our faith, then he is able to move in ways that we could never do on our own, but he, we, he's got to be flexible. Somebody once said, we have to be flexible. Somebody once said something like, you can't steer a docked boat. In other words, if you have only enough faith to dock the boat and lean into the Lord, but not enough faith to allow him to move you, he can't steer you. He can't take you in the directions that he wants you to go. Here's the thing as we finish up. I am not telling you not to do the work. This principle is not about that. But this principle is about saying that his promises are never empty. And that when we have the faith and we move in trust, that we do the work that he directs us to do, that he will accomplish so much more than we could ever do on our own. Like Ephesians 3.20 tells us, right? Immeasurably more than we could think or imagine. He loves to do the impossible without our help. But you know what? God doesn't need us to do the work that he's given us to do. Like he could have somebody else do it. He doesn't need us to do his work, but he invites us to be his co-laborers. And this principle is all about saying, Lord, this may not look the way I think it should look, but I have faith that you work all things together for my good. And I have faith that you've created me on purpose for a purpose. And there is, there is kingdom impact that you have created for me to make in this business. And therefore I will take the step of trust. I will take the step of action. I will call that person that you told me to call, even though they've told me no 20 times, but yet today you've put them on my mind, or I will do that outreach that you've told me to do, or I will be consistent in the work that I'm doing and the emails that I'm sending. And I will be committed to what you've given me to do. And I will take that step of trust because I have faith that you can do more with this than I would ever even know. And that friends is what this principle is. This, this second principle of hustle with heart, faith plus trust. That's what this is about. Mm, so good. Thank you. Holy spirit for putting it on my heart to share this. I would love to hear what you think. And I'd love for you to take advantage of some of the tools that I have down in the show notes. So first of all, here we are in Q4. If you haven't done your Q4 planning yet, I've got a great tool down there in the show notes. Go grab it, the 90 day tool. And listen, we have another live group coaching coming up in our rooted community on November 2nd, I would, November 4th, sorry. I would love for you to be a visitor and come dip your toe in. So go grab your visitor pass. And until next time, I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world, tune into God's truth and turn up focus so that you can walk out his assignment with clarity, serenity, and fulfillment. 
I'll see you on the next episode.